what is going on guys it's your boy pair plays welcome back to another video on the channel uh as you guys are seeing right now on the screen this is the video that i previously uploaded which was the thumbnail speed art for samplers my teammate and enter and this video is going to be another speed art video i enjoy doing them so i might upload a lot more of these depending on how many thumbnails that I make in the future and uh, you know I really uh, like I really like making GFX it's a really fun thing to do in my pastime whenever I'm not doing anything else and I'm just bored I can just go into Photoshop and let my brain do things that it normally wouldn't do <laughs> you know just imaginate and make my imagination come true you know but um, hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you so much for the support on the last video. And thank you guys uh, for any likes, comments, or subscribes that you drop. It means the world to me. And with all that being said, let's get right into the video. I probably won't have face cam on. Depends how I'm feeling. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, hop right into making a thumbnail for Simplers. So we're going to go in and create a new project. And this project is going to be... 1920 by 1080p 300 pixels per square inch and now we're gonna go ahead and drag in the image that Simplers had given us earlier all right boom here is the 1080e picture but for some reason the quality of it is not the best there we go that one's a little bit higher res now we get rid of the other one and now we are left with this picture it's already a smart object so we're gonna go ahead and or it's not a smart object. Now it's a smart object. Now we're gonna apply smart filters and etc. to all that. We'll go ahead and add a layer mask to it and copy the image. This top layer is going to have a smart filter for a Gaussian blur. But we don't wanna overdo the Gaussian blur. We just want it subtle. Now we'll grab our handy dandy brush and fade out the areas that we don't want blurred. So pretty much our gun area. All right, that's about uh, it for the whole painting out the blurred areas for the gun. So without the blur and with the blur. There's a, there's a difference, but a subtle difference. And that's all that matters whenever it comes to making thumbnails and stuff is the subtle differences. It's all about the subtle differences. One little change can really uh, affect how your art looks, you know? Okay, to tackle this uh, certain thumbnail, we're not going to go through, actually scratch that. We are going to go through, we're going to use the handy dandy pen tool. We're going to go through, uh, the layers outside the gun and we will do it on the main image so this one in the background where it's not painted out because obviously we can't do it on the one that is painted out <laughs> okay so we'll go ahead and do that real quick All right, we finally got done going all the way around the gun. Um, hopefully this part's part of the gun. I don't really play Infinite Warfare, so I have absolutely no idea. I'm assuming it is though. It looks like it. Yeah, that looks like part of the gun. Okay, cool, awesome. Now here I like to make a selection and go ahead and copy this layer. So I'll actually copy the layer from here we have to go to the marquee tool to do that. Layer via copy. Now we have a copy of just the gun, as you can see right here. Now, this is where I like to go through and add a layer style to the gun. And this is also where I want to like, think of the theme of the thumbnail, like the color theme. 
Uh, last one, I made a blue picture, a blue thumbnail for Simpler. So this one, since I see mostly red colors in here and it will be easier to blend in the future, we're gonna go ahead and do a red layer style for this, uh, for this thumbnail here. What I like to normally do first is start with our inner glow, our outer glow, and uh, then go with a gradient and just blend it all together really nicely. So we'll go ahead and add this inner glow. We'll just go ahead and turn it to screen real quick and we'll add a nice little red color. Get that like really blended with the other reds in the image. This is also where I mess with like the, the blend mode. I really like the uh, color dodge or the lighten lighten or the color dodge and in this case i think i'm going to go with the color dodge we're not going to turn it full intensity turn the size down a little bit and turn down the range now we'll turn up the opacity to 100 now this is where i go ahead and do the outer glow this too will be that uh the same like reddish color but we're going to make that one a little bit more brighter on the exterior we want no spread but i do want to figure out why and i think i know why I'll just press ok real quick put that on top there we go now that's above the blur now honestly if we wanted to we could leave the whole gun area blurred which honestly i think that's what i'm going to do okay that is unblurring it <laughs> now all we have uh, is the kill feed over there unblurred Going back into the blending options for the weapon, something like this looks really good and you might even be able to get away with like a color dodge add and we'll make the gun a little bit bigger. Just because we can, you know, that's, we have these abilities out here to do that. All right, going back into the blending options real quick, we can go to the gradient overlay. Obviously we don't want that, uh, that, but we can go in here and find a, there's actually not any gonna be any default reds that look good. So we'll just get rid of that. We'll add a red over here. Maybe we'll make it like that little peachy color or whatever and drop the opacity of the right side over here down to zero. Now we have this. We're gonna change the angle a bit of the actual gradient and mess with the scaling of the gradient a little bit and then now I'm messing with the blend mode something like a lighten or a color dodge add even the color dodge I think the color dodge looks good gives that nice little glow that we're looking for and technically it's literally all I would do with the actual gun itself i'd probably turn the effects off and throw it into a camera raw filter mess around with that a little bit so right here we have the gun this video turned into a speed art into like a kind of like a tutorial i guess you can say so i would mess with the exposure a little bit maybe turn up the contrast a little bit and this is where i would mess with like the highlights we'll turn the highlights up a little bit drop down the shadows, uh, bring up the whites and drop some of the blacks. Now we're going to texture and clarity. We'll bring those up to three and bring the dehaze down negative four and mess with the saturation and vibrance just a little bit. Maybe bring saturation down some. And now we got a good balance makes the gun pop and we turn the filters back on and voila it looks beautiful now the same overlay we can use for like the text or whatever like not overlay but the layer styles so now that i have my gun done easy right we're gonna move over to the text i love using couture uh and road rage as my fonts couture is this one right here hello right 
and then road rage is this one right here another solid text so just like last time for the text we're gonna have couture and then number we're gonna do road rage the highlights there we go we have the text right here easy right now it is on uh just i believe standard i don't think it's on bold usually if you want bold you can have it on bold you don't necessarily have to but it does look nice you can't do no warping or anything whenever you have bold on it just takes it away unless you rasterize or convert it to a smart object though i like giving it a little a lower arc and putting it like plus two and putting the vertical distortion to like plus two as well so it gives that nice little pop and lean back kind of coming out at you you know what i mean and then uh this is where i would just like find where i want to put it on the screen obviously we have a lot of space on here and i'm thinking maybe putting the number 31 right about there so yeah we have a lot of space right here on the screen and then boom that's that's pretty much perfect to me now we'll just make a new layer right here for the text and we'll go road rage and we'll go hashtag number 31 i'm gonna try to get it as straight as possible in line with the uh, actual text so it doesn't get thrown off get a little bit closer up here make sure yeah that looks like it's about 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 even with it right now we have that we can probably get away with making the actual text a little bit closer so something like that that looks really good now the layer styles for the text i have a pack that i downloaded somewhere <laughs> i don't remember exactly where i downloaded it from but here it is the mega layer st uh styles pack i'm pretty sure you can just uh search this on youtube mega layer styles pack and i like this one for my text so i'm gonna go ahead copy that layer style and paste that right here onto highlights now the drop shadow was a little too much for me so in that case i like to bring it down and drop the opacity a little bit on it so it's not too overwhelming maybe even drop the size a little bit more and bring out the distance that looks really good to me now for the number we're going to do kind of like what i did with the other one where it was blue but we're going to make this one red so this one has a really nice red layer style we're going to go ahead and grab that real quick copy that layer style and paste it right on the number again the drop shadow is a little too much for me so we'll bring that down bring that down bring that up and possibly even bring it out a little bit more because we don't want it too overwhelming but we do want it noticeable to and make it to pop out now this inner glow um i don't know if i really like the white so we're going to try to make it like a a red and make it a see what we can do with this honestly it might be too much on the size so we're bringing down the size a little bit and something like that looks quite good to me if you ask me and that's about it for the text really now uh getting back to the very first thing that we did we made a mask and we blurred out the whole entire background except for the gun and the kill feed but pear why did you unblur the kill feed well that's a very simple question and i have a very simple question or answer whatever you get what i mean the kill feed is important because it lets people know that hey this guy hits bangers now one thing we could do to make this uh, a little bit better make it um, pop out a little bit more as we could pop pop out the polygono lasso and just go around the text of the kill feed 
ever so slightly like that. Now we have an outline. Now we can go ahead and change our feather, which I think I'm gonna do like a seven. Press okay. Uh, that looks good to me. So that we don't have sharp edges and we can do a layer view copy. That now is, I believe I might've just, let's go back. I did, I did it on the wrong layer. So yeah, go back to the Marcade tool, layer V copy. Now we have this, we'll bring it above and beyond. Now we'll make it ever so slightly bigger, enough to where it's like, Hey, there's text here but like it doesn't really you can't really tell that this is not part of the other part of it, it, you know you know what I mean it's it doesn't make it where it doesn't look like it's part of the actual background so we could even get away with possibly going through like this actually we can't the reason why we can't is because the other kill feeds there we could do a content aware fill and do that, but that's just extra work. This honestly looks good. Plus it won't be noticeable after we go through with a color correction filter and all this other stuff. So basically that is it. Like base thumbnail, uh, you got your text, your gun, all that other stuff looks pretty solid. Uh, now on top of that, you just want to go through and add your color correcting. Um, I do sometimes make like my own little color corrections or I do go through and pull them from different packs and stuff like I have my own pack with color corrections in there and I also have several other packs with color corrections that I downloaded from Google and bought so most of the time I'll, whenever I'm doing my curves I'll do a little bit out at the top here and a little bit down at the bottom here it just really depends on the thumbnail you're making and the surroundings of what's in the picture itself we'll mess with the levels a little bit um before and after that looks pretty good Exposure, I always like going up just a little bit on both the offset and the exposure and then bringing the gamma correction up a little bit. Like it gives this nice little uh, look to it, quite nice. Then we wanna add this gradient here, leave it how it is. You can change the, the scale of it if you want, you know, change it up, make it whatever. But we're gonna leave it at the default. You can do lighten or you can just mess around with it and see what looks good. I'm not going to leave it full opacity either. So whatever we uh, find and decide, hey, that looks good. Like, not even going to lie, the hue right here looks pretty decently good. It uh, hues everything to like a red. That's pretty solid if you ask me. Another thing I like to do is add another layer. And we already have a red selected and we're on our brush. And make sure the hardness is down at 0%. We'll add like these little side lights. So like this, then we'll go to lighten. Then we'll bring down the opacity to about like 21%. So as you can see, it brings these like little red lights out on the side. Looks pretty good if you ask me. We'll add a top light as well, which is just going to be a a white control R for your ruler so you can get middle after I add the light up at the top I go ahead and bring that opacity down a little bit and now we got this still like image or whatever so I always go ahead and group that up and copy copy that and I hide one and control shift E now we have one still image from there, I like to go ahead and go into the camera raw filter one more time after doing this. I will go ahead and see what auto has to uh, offer me. And if I don't like it, I can just go back to default. 
cycle between the auto and default and see what actually changes and go in and actually change it for myself. So I will bring up the exposure a little bit and same thing as earlier. Uh, I feel like the best way to do this is just like bring your highlights and whites out a little bit more and bring out your shadows and blacks down a little bit. And we'll go ahead and add a little bit of texture clarity and get rid of some of that dehaze. And we'll raise the vibrance up a little bit along with our saturation, press OK. And now as you can see, there are some subtle changes between the old picture and the new one. Now I always like to end off my thumbnails and stuff with a smart sharpen filter and just do that. Now, as you can see, it just looks a lot sharper than before. That is basically how I make my thumbnails for anyone that was wondering. I appreciate you if you did watch all the way to the end of this video. Um, after recording all this, it's been 31 minutes, so hopefully I can condense that down to in like less than 10 minutes. I'm hoping. I don't want a really long video. <laughs> But uh, if you did enjoy, leave a like, comment, subscribe. It'd mean the absolute world to me. With all that being said, I appreciate you guys so much. I stream every day over on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash pair X. And I will catch you guys in the next video or stream. Whatever it may be. Stay juicy, my fellow subscribers. And peace out.